Good morning. We welcome all of you to our Feast of the Ascension of the Lord. We welcome those who are here in our chapel this morning at St. Paul Monastery and those who are joining us over our ecumenical channel here in Northeast Ohio. And as we come together, we come together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And And with with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 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 Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Gladden us with holy joys, almighty God, and make us rejoice with devout thanksgiving. For the ascension of Christ your Son is our exaltation. And where the head has gone before in glory, the body is called to follow in hope. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen, he presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, about which you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water. But in a few days, you will be baptized by the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, 
Are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He answered them, It is not for you to know the time or the seasons that the Father has established by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, and as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. While they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, suddenly two men dressed in white garments stood beside them. They said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. All you peoples, clap your hands. Shout to God with cries of gladness. For the Lord the Most High, the Awesome, is the King over all the earth. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. God mounts his throne amid shouts of joy, the Lord amid trumpet blasts. Sing praise to God, sing praise, praise to our King, sing praise. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the the king of all the earth is God sings hymns of praise God reigns over the nation God sits upon his holy A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, may the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation resulting in knowledge of him. May the eyes of your hearts be enlightened that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call, what are the riches of glory in his inheritance among the holy ones, and what is the surpassing greatness of his power for us who believe in accord with the exercise of his great might, which he worked in Christ, raising him from the dead and seating him 
at his right hand in the heavens, far above every principality, authority, power, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things beneath his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. all nations says the Lord I am with you always until the end of the Lord be with you and, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. you, O Lord. The eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When they saw him, they worshiped, but they doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Again, just a few announcements before we begin our reflection upon the scriptures this morning. Uh, as I have told you over the last couple of weeks, that we will officially open our chapel tomorrow morning on Monday for all our weekday masses, and next Sunday officially open to the public on the Feast of Pentecost. Those of you who are gathered here this morning have seen the signs on our pews that we ask everybody to sit in every other pew. And if we uh, get so full of people that we have to fill in those other pews, we will do so accordingly. We also ask people that they wear a mask if they have them. If not, I have some wonderful bandanas in the back there. So if you don't like your mask or you want a bandana, feel free to put it on you. And just remember that when you take a bandana, it is now yours. So don't leave it back for the rest of us here for that. We're also going to respect one another. While it's not mandatory, some may wear masks, some will not wear masks. We're going to respect the choices of everybody. So we're not going to get angry if you don't want to wear one, and we're not going to get angry if you do wear one. Also also in giving communion, uh, we're going to have our communion stations on either side here in the front. So as people come up the middle and go down the, the, the front here, it'll give a little bit more of a spacing option for us when we give communion. We ask that you receive communion in the hand and extend your hand out further for us to give that to you. However, if you decide that you would like to receive in the mouth, that is okay. We are asking that you come towards the end of the uh, uh, line, the procession coming up, because if by chance our fingers should touch 
um, your lips or whatever, then we need to sanitize before we go to the next person. So we don't want to hold up the communion for that, but uh, we'll work accordingly. And also just a reminder that uh, even though we're all the churches in our diocese of Youngstown are open uh, starting this week, or most of them as far as I know, uh, if you decide to not come, you are still have the uh, dispensation from the bishops uh, uh, from the obligation of coming here on Sunday Mass. So that's still in effect if you decide not to come and you use your discretion. But we hope to see all our friends and uh, family members here uh, starting this week. This week in the church is World Communications Day. And so our Holy Father has given us a reflection upon this day, and it's the storytelling aspect of communications. How do we tell our stories? And I think it's very fitting that it falls on this Memorial Day weekend because this is an opportunity to tell those stories of people who gave their lives in battle. Of course, as you know, Memorial Day started after uh, the Civil War as people were beginning to remember those who lost, th lost their lives in the war. So this is primarily what we do on this weekend is remember all those service men and women who gave their lives over the years. So maybe there's going to be some stories that we will tell. Maybe our uh, people who are veterans who have survived the wars, our parents, our grandparents, even our brothers and sisters, our sons and grandsons and daughters who all perhaps have served can tell their own stories of being in the war. And so this is an opportunity to listen. And if you're watching on television, cable this week, there's lots of movies and lots of shows out there honoring our veterans. So it's a great time to listen and to share those stories and to be thankful for those who gave their lives and then also to be thankful to our current veterans for the service they are giving to us today. I think in this moment of our coronavirus uh, crisis, uh, we've had an opportunity maybe to share more stories with one another. Maybe we sat around the table a little bit more and we've had to focus on communicating with one another. So maybe we are telling stories. Maybe we tell the things that are going on in our lives. Maybe it's an opportunity to find out about things that perhaps we didn't know about our family members. Maybe we've been in contact on, uh, on the video world and to other people and we're communicating with them and talking with them. I know I Zoom with my family about every every two weeks and we find out what's going on and we tell our stories and so that's the important thing of communicating and, and letting each other know that we care for them and we love them accordingly. Of course, on this Sunday, in Ascension Sunday, we tell the story of Jesus Christ. And that's very important that we tell others. So this is the opportunity, again, when we are home with our family and friends, to tell the story of our faith. Maybe we pray a little bit more. Maybe we're doing daily prayer. Maybe we're doing the rosary with our family and friends. Maybe it's an opportunity while we're watching the movies elsewhere, we're watching movies on the lives of the saints, watching something about how our faith is growing because we want to tell the story of Jesus Christ. We want to tell the story that he loved us so much that he came into our world, came into our lives, and now we talk about how he's returning to the Father. And he tells, as we read in today's gospel, he tells his disciples now that he is returning back to his Father, it is us to tell the story. Go and tell the world and bless them in the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Tell them all that we have learned about Jesus Christ. So we need to tell those stories. We need to tell the stories of Jesus. We need to tell the story of God loving his people in the Old Testament. We need to tell the parables as best we can remember them. And this is the opportunity. And if we remember, I told you last week, we are on four very important Sundays coming up. The Feast of the Ascension today, the Lord returns back to heaven after he has shared his presence and love with us. Next week we share Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit that he gave us to enlighten us to share about our faith and story. The following week we're going to celebrate the feast of the most holy trinity, the love between Father, Son, and Spirit that is shared in our life and we share that Trinitarian love with one another. And finally that fourth Sunday is the feast of Corpus Christi, the feast of the body of the Christ. And that is what we're receiving as we come, the body and blood of Christ. And many people have told me they're looking forward to our church 
church is opening again so that they physically receive the body and blood of Christ rather than the spiritual communion. And finally, there was something I saw on the internet yesterday I thought was very fascinating. It's a new Bible. It's called Biblioteca.co, not .com, .co. You can find it on the website. They are coming up. It's out of Germany. And what they have done is they've taken the Bible and given it to us in six volumes, eliminating all the chapter numbers and verse numbers. And if you think about it, it was only in the 1200s that we started putting those things in the Bible so you can say, okay, John 3, 16, and uh, what it says and what it means. But before then, it was just the thing uh, given to us in the words. And the guy who thought of this says, I wanted to present it as a literature, as a story, as we can read it. And you don't get caught up in the footnotes and the cross-references. It's just there as you would open up any novel to read. So I thought it was kind of interesting, might be a little bit expensive but it is something you might want to consider as far as storytelling. So today, let us tell the story of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us know that he loves us and shares his life with us, and we want to share his story with one another. As the gospel tells us today, let us go forth and bless Father, Son, and Spirit. Let us go forth and tell people who Jesus Christ is for each one of us. Let us stand together now and share our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. On this joyous day, marking Jesus Christ's return to his Father in heaven, we offer our needs and the needs of those around us. For the church, that empowerment by the Spirit, we may faithfully give witness to the gospel and continue Christ's mission of bringing hope and healing to those in need, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are fearful and anxious, that they may recognize God's message, fear not is for them, and allow God to calm their spirits and give them hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the human family, that the risen Lord will deliver us from the coronavirus, keep safe all who are vulnerable to the disease, and protect all health care workers and first responders who are serving those who are ill. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the homebound, and the sick, especially Bishop Murray, that the risen Lord will protect them, renew their spirits, and give them strength. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, particularly those who have served our nation, that God will welcome them into the company of the saints forever, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And as we pray this Mass, let us remember Joseph, 
Hannah. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Also want to pray for Rick Durkin. Many of us know him. He's a member of our brother uh, of our Knights. He's also a, a good friend of us here at St. Paul Monastery. He is in the uh, Cleveland Clinic uh, fighting an infection, but I hear that it's going well with the medication he's getting. So let us continue to keep him in our prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of mercy and love, listen to the prayers we make here on earth and grant them through your Son, our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. sacrifice of Christ, one throne above the heavens, Christ has risen as he said, and will come to wake the dead, Christ will return and set us free, one sacrifice of love. for the nation. Jesus suffered, died, and rose, and ascended to the throne. Christ will return to save the reigns in splendor over all, one sacrifice of Christ. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our, our good and the good, good of all his holy church. We offer sacrifice now in supplication, O Lord, to honor the wondrous ascension of your Son. Grant, we pray, that through this most holy exchange, we too may rise up to the heavenly realms through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For the Lord Jesus, the King of glory, conqueror of sin and death, ascended today to the highest heavens as the angels gazed in wonder mediator between God and us, judge of the world and Lord of hosts. He ascended not to distance himself from our lowly state, but that we, his members, might be confident of following where he, our head and founder, has gone before. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O oh Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostle, St. Paul, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. i 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. And blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For those who are unable to be with us this morning to receive physically the body of Christ, we have an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you only into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Every fox a den, every bird a nest, but the Son of Man has no place to rest. Every heart a man, every king a throne, but the Word made flesh, no earthly home. Your burdens light and your yoke is easy. Make your home in me. Make your home in me. Lord, you come to me in your homelessness, burning in your eyes, such a great distress. Who will heal your Make your home in me. Make your home in me. Where there is love, there is no fear. So make your home and residence here. I'm so Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who allow those on earth to celebrate divine mysteries, grant, we pray, that Christian hope may draw us onward to where our nature is united with you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I thank our musicians, our server, and all of you here at our chapel at St. Paul Monastery, and all those who are joining us over our ecumenical channel here in Northeast Ohio. Have a wonderful day, and please remain safe. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain, for purple mountains, majesties.